Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the concept of cellular death. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. And we're going to be posting brand new content practically every day for your medical education to help you pass your examinations, whether it's your class exams or your board exams. So definitely make sure to check us out. Definitely make sure to subscribe if you like this content. So with that being said, let's talk about cellular death by first reviewing the concept of cellular injury. This video, uh, this topic, excuse me, has already been discussed in a previous video in depth that you can check on our account. So I highly recommend you search or you watch the video about cellular injury where we talk about this concept in depth. But the main concept uh, you need to remember is that our cells are able to adapt to a lot of stress. They have the ability to handle a lot of stress and they've created these mechanisms to be able to handle this stress. These mechanisms include hyperplasia, hypertrophy, even metaplasia, right? And these are abil these are abilities our cells have developed over centuries and uh, over a long period of time to be ha able to handle stress so we don't essentially kill ourselves off, right? But that stress is a limited amount that our, our cells can handle. So what happens when the amount of stress far exceeds our cells' ability to handle that stress? Well, in that situation, you are going to have cellular injury occurring. That is the perfect phenomenon for cellular injury. And it seems very intuitive, but I just have to say it. So cellular injury is going to occur when this amount of stress placed upon a cell far exceeds the cell's ability to adapt. When these coping mechanisms right here, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, or even metaplasia, cannot handle the stress being placed upon the cell, that is when you're going to see cellular injury occurring. Now, there's going to be many different ranges of cellular injury occurring. And essentially, cell damage can occur in two main stages. The first stage is going to be reversible, in which you're going to have cellular swelling occurring. That just means that the cell is just going to grow in size. And the reason why it's going to grow in size is because you are going to increase the interest cellular water concentration. We have discussed this in detail in our previous lecture about cellular damage, so definitely check that out. But after the reversible stage, if you do not remove the stressor, you're going to progress, and that is going to be the irreversible stage where you're going to have membrane damage, especially the cellular membrane, but also the mitochondrial membrane and lysosomal membrane. Don't forget, in the mitochondrial membrane, you're going to have cytochrome C, which is an apoptotic factor, and in the lysosomal membrane, within the lysosome, you're going to have enzymes, which are going to digest our cells. So when you damage these membranes, you are going to have cellular injury, and the main uh, the main schematic you need to remember is from a normal cell, you can progress to a reversible cellular injury, aka the cell can swell. This is reversible, and that's why we have two arrows pointing forwards and backwards. But if you do not reverse the stress, if you continuously put stress upon our cell, the reversible cellular injury will progress to irreversible cellular injury, which cannot go backwards. Irreversible, uh, irreversible cellular injury is not is not reversible. That's in its name, right? It's, it's pretty clear. So what's going to happen from here on is that the cell is going to die. And once you hit this stage, when you have the irreversible cellular injury occurring, our cells, our bodies have developed ways of killing off the cell. Okay, so cellular death at this stage is imminent. Sorry, it's going to happen. So now that we've discussed cellular injury, a quick recap, let's discuss our topic, which is cellular death. Now, cellular death is a very important concept because it's going to come up over and over again in the histology portion. It's going to come up again and again in terms of just basic patho pathology and pathophysiology. So what's going on when a cell dies? Well, the main thing that happens is that you are going to lose the nucleus. So the morphologic hallmark of cell death is the loss of the nucleus, right? This is essentially where all our DNA is stored. This is the brain of the cell. And if the brain of the cell dies, well, the cell itself is going to die because there's nothing leading that cell and leading the functions of that cell. So how does this happen? Well, the process of cellular death, but the process specifically of the loss of the nucleus is very high yield. You need to remember this because this is an easy concept that you can be tested on. It's just easy. Give me points along the way and you should just know it and commit it to memory now. So the first process is going to be pycnosis. In pycnosis, within the cell itself, let's say this is the nucleus, right? In pycnosis, the nucleus is going to shrink in size, okay? I'm going to draw the nucleus a little bit darker. It is just going to shrink in size. And once it starts shrinking, 
you're going to progress to the next step of cell death. From pycnosis, you're going to go to karyorexis. In karyorexis, the nucleus is actually going to split up into smaller little pieces. Okay? Smaller pieces. The same nucleus is going to just split up. And then finally, you're going to go to karyolysis, in which the nuclear pieces are then degraded. Okay? And when that happens, you are going to have no nucleus itself, and that is a dead cell. And why is it a dead cell? Because you have no nucleus present, which is just the morphologic hallmark of a dead cell. Now, the mechanism of cellular death is also very important. We're going to be discussing these conce concepts further as well, but you should have a good understanding. And right now, we're going to have a brief understanding of these mechanisms, okay? So the two main mechanisms that, go, uh, that, that happen when our cells are dying are going to be necrosis and apoptosis, okay? So let's first talk about cellular necrosis. Cellular necrosis is the death of cells at a large scale, right? This is a, a necrotic uh, a mechanism. It, this is a death a mechanism of cell death, but it's actually occurring at a large scale, and often this is occurring at the tissue level. You might have heard that tissue necrosis can occur via many different uh, mechanisms, but that's essentially what we're talking about, death of cells on a large scale, okay? Now, how does this happen? Essentially, exogenous cellular injury is going to result in uncontrolled cellular degradation. And the way this happens is that normal cellular enzymes are actually released and they're going to be responsible for the controlled cell death that's occurring, okay? AA, i.e. apoptosis. And these normal cellular enzymes are actually inactivated during cellular necrosis, okay? So essentially, along with the inactivation of apoptosis, normal controlled death, you might have some exogenous injury occurring. You might have some insult occurring. You might have some tissue damage or some trauma occurring that can lead to necrosis along with infection that can also lead to necrosis. Now, this is usually happening because of the underlying pathologic process that's going on, all right? So usually there are many different types of uh, underlying pathologies like we discussed, like I just said right now, you could have, i.e., uh, you could have trauma, okay, you can have infection that can lead to cellular necrosis, you can even have inflammation. So this is essentially an exogenous pathway. Now when it comes to cellular necrosis, what you need to remember is that your intracellular components are going to be released, okay? They're going to be released into the extracellular space, okay? And what happens when intracellular components go outside? Well, eventually, you are going to attract, you are going to attract white blood cells to that area. And what happens when you have white blood cells? You are going to have inflammation. So the hallmark of cellular necrosis is going to be the presence of inflammation, especially on histology. Very, very important to understand. You are going to have inflammation when your cells are dying, especially at the large scale, because a lot of this damage that's occurring is going to be caused by our own body as well as what, what other underlying pathologic process is going on, whether it's trauma, infection, or inflammation our body is still going to respond to that ex exogenous pathway, that exogenous pathologic process. And the way it's going to respond, no matter what, is going to be through our white blood cells, through our immune system. And no matter what, when that happens, you are going to have some self-damage occurring. Now, there are several different types of cellular necrosis that we're not really going to talk about in this video, but you should know about them. And they include types like coagulative necrosis, liquefactive, caseous necrosis. This is going to be discussed in upcoming lectures, so make sure you stay tuned. So this is cellular necrosis in a nutshell, a very high yield topic. Okay, I'm just going to write that here. All right, so now let's talk about cellular apoptosis. Unlike cellular necrosis, this is actually cellular suicide. In other words, this is going to be cell death, okay, at the molecular level, 
all right? So this is actually small scale cell death occurring. And why does this happen? Mainly because our cells are reliant on ATP. And when you reduce ATP, okay, or when you get rid of ATP, our cells cannot function, okay? So the normal functions of our cells cannot occur. And this is going to lead to death via apoptosis. All right, so genetically, this type of cell death, sorry, this type of cell death is actually genetically programmed. It happens because of the genes that are happening. And they can actually be induced by our cell itself or by other cells, external cells as well. And the reason why you need to remember that is because this is essentially a defense mechanism. Okay, cellular apoptosis is a way for our body to make sure that a non-functioning or malfunctioning cells in our body are taken care of. They're removed from the pool of cells in our body so that those cells do not develop into cancer or do not cause other type of harm. Now, our cell itself can kill itself by saying, hey, I'm no longer doing anything and therefore I need to just die off, okay? It's a cellular suicide mechanism. Or if another cell notices that this cell is not doing anything, it can be induced and it can actually kill off uh, the cell that's not doing anything. Now, usually this can involve single cells or even a small group of cells. This usually is not happening at the tissue level. This is one key distinguishing factor of cellular apoptosis compared to cellular necrosis. So examples of cellular apo apoptosis or apoptotic mechanisms are going to be these right here. Here. So first of all, you have your endometrial lining during menses. The endometrial lining sheds during the menstrual cycle in females. And the reason why it sheds is because there is no implantation of a fertilized egg in the ovary, uh, in the uterus, excuse me. So because there is no implantation, there is no need for that endometrial lining to be that hyperplastic, you know, hypertrophic. So what does our body or what does the female body do? It's going to cause apoptosis to occur. And one key question that gets asked um, a lot of times is what is the mechanism of the endometrial lining shedding during the menstrual cycle? It is apoptosis, okay, or apoptotic mechanism. Very classic, very uh, um, textbook question that gets asked so many times. All right, so that is the first example. The second example is going to be CD8 mediated T cell destruction. This is actually a type of external uh, indu induction of apoptosis. Remember, we said that apoptosis can be induced by other cells. And these other cells are usually, for the most part, they're going to be white blood cells. Okay, so you need to remember they're going to be white blood cells. Specifically, these are going to be CD8 positive T cells. Okay, they can actually induce cell mediated death when they come across a cell that's either not functioning properly, that could be uh, infected, those side, uh, those uh, cells can actually kill off the malfunctioning or the abnormal cell. All right. And then finally, in embryogenesis, when the embryo is developing, you constantly have new cells developing, but you also have apoptosis occurring, right? You also have destruction of cells. That's what allows us to have our lumen within our, our embryo that becomes our GI tract. It's all because of apoptosis. So without apoptosis, we would not be able to develop properly. And this is also an example of cellular apoptosis. Embryogenesis is very high yield. A lot of people forget this. A lot of people don't remember this and they don't realize that's what's actually going on. But this is a key mechanism of the developmenting, the developing fetus and the developmental cycle. So with that being said, that covers pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to cellular death, just the basics. Now we're gonna continue on this lecture, uh, this lecture series by discussing cellular necrosis, cellular apoptosis in detail. But for now, this is gonna be a quick, uh, well covered uh, overview of these topics. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. It allows us to create this content so it stays free for you so you don't have to pay anything, all right? So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you back here in the next lecture.